As the bullet travels to the target, it's affected by different environmental factors. Now, the biggest is also the easiest to account for, and that's gravity. But the second biggest factor is a little bit harder to work with, that's wind. Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. We've been putting together a series of videos to help you with some long range shooting and taking my experience as a sniper team leader in First Ranger Battalion and as a sniper instructor and turning that into something that you can use on your next hunting or long range shooting trip. Now, when we're dealing with accounting for wind, we're gonna to start to bring in a little bit more of an art to the science. There's some right answers, there's some calculations we can make, but you know what? A lot of this is gonna come down to what you're used to and practice of seeing something downrange, trying to account for it and seeing the results. Now, we need to be able to figure out how to judge the wind speed. I know a lot of people will judge where they're standing at. They can feel the wind on their face and have a good idea about how fast it's blowing. I've even seen people take out wind meters and try and get an accurate reading of what's going on. Well, the wind meter gives you an accurate reading where you're standing, but that does nothing for you 500 yards down the range. So you can look at things down range too. You can look at vegetation. You can look at, let's say, flags or something that's blowing around down range. Or you can do what I like to do, which is look at the mirage. Now, mirage is just the term we use to describe the heat waves you see through a scope. Now, if you have a high power scope, it can be the rifle scope or a spotting scope, and you're looking down range, you can actually see the heat waves rising up. Even in snow, you can see these heat waves, so you can use it in almost all environments. The trick is going to be getting your eye to get used to seeing these waves and being able to read them. So when you focus on the target with a scope, I suggest you back the focus off a bit, maybe to about two thirds of the way to the target. That way, you're not actually looking at the target, you're looking at the air between you and the target. When you do that, you should be able to see some of that mirage in your scope. Now, this is what the mirage is going to look like. If you have no wind, you're going to see mirage that goes like this, just straight up. We actually call that boiling mirage. And that means you either have no wind, or the wind is coming straight at you, or straight away from you, so you can't see any side to side change. Now, once you start seeing that mirage change angles a little bit, you know there's something going on downrange with wind. If you have a little bit of an angle to the mirage, you can call that maybe zero to three miles an hour. If you have more of a change, maybe about five to seven. Now, when it gets straight flat to the side, I see that at about 10 miles an hour. So if we have straight sideways, I call that a 10 mile an hour wind. And I can tell when it's more than 10 when those lines flatten out a lot. That means the wind's moving a lot quicker. We can be around the 12 mile an hour range at that point. And by looking at these heat waves and how they're reacting downrange, you're going to get a better idea of what's going on with the wind. And what's nice about this is if you focus your scope at those different distances, you can actually then pull back even further and check maybe a third of the way to the target. And don't be surprised, especially if you're out hunting over hills, that you see mirage that looks like this at the target, but mirage that's going the exact opposite direction closer than the target. That's going to happen between your hills and valleys. The wind is actually going to change the direction. And by using Mirage, you can actually look at each section all the way to the target and figure out what's going on. Put all that together into a better picture so you can figure out what you need to do to compensate for that. Whereas if you have a wind meter or you're just looking at the vegetation or brush in a certain area, you're only going to get a good idea of what the wind is doing there and not all the way to the target. And now it's important to know the whole way. I hear people say, oh, only the wind at the shooter matters, or no, only the wind of the target matters. Well, the fact of the matter is, all of the wind matters. Even though the bullet is less affected by the wind at the shooter than it is at the target, you still need to know it all. And now, say, when I say it's less affected, I don't mean to say that because the bullet's moving faster, for some reason it's not going to get moved. I'm just saying it's exposed to the wind for a shorter period of time. So if you were shooting, and here's your target, and I draw a line halfway, the distance doesn't matter. We're just going to talk about the first half and the second half. We know that the bullet going from the end of the rifle to the halfway mark is going to get to that halfway mark faster than the bullet's going to get from the halfway mark to the target because the bullet is still slowing down. So if I have a 10 mile an hour wind going from straight right to left and a 10 mile an hour wind going straight left to right the second half, this 10 mile an hour wind is going to have a little bit more of an effect. Again, not because the bullet's necessarily just because it's going slower that it's going to be moved more, but it's because it's getting that 10 mile an hour wind longer. So it might get blown to the left for one second, but it's going to get blown back to the right for a full second and a half when it's flying that second distance. So just knowing that wouldn't help you in this situation, and just knowing this wouldn't help you. You would need to know both to get a full picture of what's going on all the way to the target. Now, so you know how fast the wind's blowing. So what? 
you need to know what that wind's going to do to your bullet when it goes down range. One of the oldest systems I hear about is going to be a wind formula that they teach in some sniper schools and you can find in manuals all over the place. Now this wind formula seems simple enough and in a way it almost seems like it's the most accurate, but it seems the most accurate. If you're doing calculations, people tend to think, well, that's got to be the right answer. Look what the calculator told me. Well, as you're going to see, this formula can work, but it's not always going to be the best answer for you. Now, here's the formula. You take the distance to the target in hundreds of yards. I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. You multiply that by the wind speed in miles per hour. Then you divide all of that by a constant. Now, I say you divide it by a constant, but you're going to see real quick here, it's not really constant because it changes. We're just calling it a constant because it makes sense for the formula. Now, when you work this formula out, you're going to end up with your answer in minutes of angle. We covered this in earlier videos and talked about what minutes of angle are and what they can do for you. If you need a refresher, go back and check out what those are first so you can understand what we're going to do with this later. Now, this constant changes with distance. Now, again, this is what some of the sniper schools in the military use and in some manuals. So this is only going to work for the 308 round that's set up coming out of one of those sniper rifles. But the system says that from 100 to 500 yards, you should be using a constant of 13. At about 600 yards, you should be using a constant of 12. From about 7 to 800 yards, a constant of 11. And then 900 and beyond, using a constant of 10. So like I said, it's not really constant that changes, but these are the values you can use. Now, if you see the other videos, I don't like things that are complicated. I want to be able to do something easily in the field that's easy to remember and I can use each time. So I just look at these, and even though the numbers get smaller at some of these really far distances, I like to use 12 for everything. That's a good mix for me. And although that's not technically right, I'm going to show you how it's going to be close enough. So I'm going to leave these constants down here so we can refer back to them and you can see the difference. So let's work this out for a couple examples. I said first you take the distance to the target in hundreds of yards. So let's say we have a 500 yard target and we have a 10 mile per hour wind that we're trying to account for. And I want to figure out what effect that's going to have on the bullet. Well the distance in hundreds of yards is 5 because there's 5 100 yard increments in there. Really, all I'm doing is I'm bringing the decimal place over. If it was 550 yards, I would get 5.5. So I'm going to take the distance in hundreds of yards, which is 5, multiply it by my wind speed in miles per hour, and then divide it by my constant. Well, over here, my constant says I need to be using 13. So I'll do it the right way first with 13 and show you what we get. But then I'm also going to show you how far off I am if I just use 12 like I like to in all distances. So let's take our calculator out. My 5 times my 10 is 50, I divide that by 13, and I up, end up with 3.84 minutes of angle. That means that wind is going to shift the bullet that much in the direction the wind is blowing at 500 yards. Now let's look at the 12 that I use. Again we have the 5 times 10 is 50, divided by my 12 gives me 4.16 minutes of angle. Well, that's a change. It surely is, but let's figure out what these minutes of angle are going to be at that distance. Well, that 3.84 minutes of angle, there's 5 inches per minute of angle that distance, gives me a 19.2 inch difference. That's how far the wind's going to blow it at that distance. Let's figure it out down here now. My 4.16 minutes of angle times 5 inches per minute of angle at that distance gives me 20.8 inches. Not that big of a difference if you think about it. Matter of fact, I'd be happy to be able to guess the wind accurately enough that I'm only going to be about an inch off. You see, if I don't get this wind proper, it's actually going to be more of a problem than using a different constant. Here's what I mean. If it actually was, let's say, 11 miles an hour and I guessed it was 10, it's going to be pretty hard to see the difference between 10 and 11 miles an hour downrange. So let's figure out what that problem would be. If I had 5 times the actual 11, but I still thought that it was 10, and I'm using my proper constant at 13 because I want to be accurate. Let's see what that does for us. 5 times 11 is 55 divided by the correct constant of 13 gives me an answer of 4.23 minutes of angle. Just by getting the wind wrong by one mile per hour and even using the technically correct constant, 
gives me a bigger error than even using my constant did. It made a jump not to 4.16, but a jump all the way up to 4.23 just by guessing the wind speed wrong. So when there's gonna be this big of a difference just on your interpretation of the wind, I would just like to use 12 and make everything easy. But again, it's still gonna be up to you. Now keep in mind, your caliber, your rifle, these are all gonna react differently to the wind. So it's up to you to figure this out and find a good formula for you. So instead of having to go around and try and find this perfect formula, what's probably gonna be easier to find is a ballistic calculator. There are plenty of programs that you can find on the internet that you can either pay for and some are even for free that you can pawn on your cell phone you can have out there with you if you want. That you can plug in certain features about your rifle system and you can get these data charts for you and they can even give you your wind drift in these ballistic charts. There's even companies where you can buy index cards which already printed up for you. Now, although these are simple because they give you the answer right there, they're also not 100% accurate because no gun that's even the exact same caliber with the same ammo is gonna behave exactly the same at every distance. But it gives you a great starting point that you can check out and see what's going on. Then you can take the rifle out and try it out. Now, those ballistic cards are gonna give you what's gonna to happen to the wind usually at a fixed wind, so like at a 10 miles an hour. And for this example, I gave you wind at a 10 mile an hour. But that only matters if the wind is going straight side to side at 10 miles an hour. We like to call that a full value wind. So if we go back to the overhead view I had before of you're shooting up towards the target and the wind I had blowing one way or the other. Well, if it's going straight one way or the other, we call that full value because what happens is the wind has a full effect on the bullet and you end up using the full value of the wind in the formula. So if this was a 10 mile an hour wind, we use the full 10 miles an hour in the calculation. Now, what if the wind is instead going at a half, a 45 degree angle. We actually call that a half value wind. Now the wind can still be 10 miles per hour, but because it's going at an angle, it's not gonna have the same full effect on the bullet. Matter of fact, it's going, gonna have half the effect on the bullet. So we call a wind that comes at either angle, in either direction, we call this half value wind. So what we do is when we're working our calculation and I tell you where to put the wind in, in the speed in miles per hour, you just use half of this value. So even though it's 10, you do the calculation using five, which is half that value. Or you have one of those ballistic cards that tells you what a 10 mile an hour wind does at that distance. You can just take that and half that. You see, what's nice about working with wind is it's completely linear. What I mean by that is double the wind has double the effect. Half the wind has half the effect. So if I'm looking at my card and the, some of the calculations we figured out before, and I have a 20 inch change at a certain distance with a certain wind. Now let's just say that was a 10 mile an hour wind and the distance doesn't matter. We're just gonna talk about this number. If this is what my chart tells me and I'm out shooting at the range and I see a five mile an hour wind, I can just take that, it goes into half to five, I can take that in half to 10 and I know I have a 10 inch change. If it's actually a 15 mile an hour wind, I can take that in half again and know it's gonna be a 30 inch change. It's really that easy to work with. So, what I suggest you do is actually make your own card. In the previous videos, we've also talked about how to make your own ballistic card or like a cheat sheet for you when you go out hunting. You can already have your mill range estimation formula figured out. You can already have your elevation adjustments needed written all over the card at the certain distances so you can reference this. Well, you know what? Instead of just having the distances and so on, and then having the elevation that you need in minutes of angle, I'm just guessing here what your, what your scope might be. Might as well make a second column now and go ahead and put in wind values. I like to just use 10 as a baseline, right above it to remind yourself at 10 miles an hour, and work your calculations and write in the effect that that wind is gonna have at 10 miles an hour at full value. Then, when you pull this out to reference how much you need to come up for that 300 yard target, you can also see what a 10 mile an hour wind's gonna do, and you can half that if you need to, if it's a half value wind. You can half it if the wind's only twice, uh, half as strong, or you can use it as it is, and it's gonna provide you just with one more reference point. We covered a lot of information here, and it requires you to get good at figuring out what the wind is doing, and then doing some calculations to figure out how to compensate for that. But even if you don't wanna go into this depth of it, I tell you at the very least, you can still account for the wind a little bit. Let's say you're shooting out of the target, or even if you're hunting, I'm not gonna try and draw an elk. Let's just say that whatever distance, at whatever size, this is an acceptable area you'd be happy if your bullet went into. 
So if it's the part of the target you wanna hit, maybe the part of the animal you wanna hit. Let's just call this, you'd be happy with a hit anywhere in here. If you're shooting at this size, this area, and you have a straight left to right wind, and you're not gonna do any of the wind calculations, but you calculated your distance properly, don't start off by aiming right in the center. You know there's a wind. It doesn't matter how strong the wind is, it's gonna have some effect on the bullet. It might be a little, it might be a lot. The point is, if we know the wind is blowing left to right, you might as well start off aiming over here, because if the wind dies, all of a sudden, you pull the trigger, the bullet leaves the barrel, and that gush that was there disappears, and now the bullet's gonna go exactly where you aimed. Well, that's a hit, remember? You were happy with a hit anywhere in here. Congratulations, that's successful. But, a little bit of wind will blow it more into the target. Even a big wind might blow it into the target. Well, you might ask, well, what if it's such a big wind that it blows it out and makes a miss anyway? Well, if you were aiming here, you would have been even further off. So at least by compensating a little bit by aiming into the wind, even if you don't do any calculations on a quick shot, you're gonna have a better chance because now you have the full width of that acceptable area to deal with when you have that wind going on out there. I hope this makes sense and I hope you try it. For some people, this is a little too confusing or it seems like too big of a challenge. I've even known some guys not to go shooting because the day was too windy. But I tell you what, next time it's a windy day, go shooting. Ex take this challenge and see what it does for you. You see, the more difficult it is, at least for me, the more fun it is. If it was easy, if there was no wind involved, anybody could do it. It's up to you to go out and practice when there is wind. So next time you're on that big hunt, you don't have to miss that shot just because it happens to be windy. You will have taken the time to practice getting used to seeing what the wind does in the scope, what that translates into for a wind speed. You'll figure out how that wind affects your bullet and you're gonna learn how to compensate for it. What that's gonna mean is you're gonna be a better all around shooter to be able to compensate for all these factors. If you need a place to go shoot, check out our website, wheretoshoot.org. And please remember, firearm safety depends on you.